Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And uh, today in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up for the um, um, few Fox backend record and playback. So I have some signal over here. Let's um, start from scratch again. So I'll just go to preset, what preset. So you just reset everything that is in the backend mode um, or any mode you're in. So let's set a start stop frequency. Um, just go to frequency, start at one gig, and stop at two gig. And as you can see, that uh, the noise voice is roughly about minus seventy, and our our uh, resolution bandwidth is at five meg. Let's lower it down furthermore. Let's just go to escape bandwidth resolution bandwidth. Let's set it down to thirty k. Roughly there. All right. And uh, and again, I'm I'm I have an antenna attached to the fuel box, and it's measuring the signal out in the air. And we're done with the setup right now. Let's change the um. Let's turn on the preamp. Just go to scale, preamp on, and we lower down that attenuations by. Yeah, to 10 dB. Um, there's a reason for doing that. I will show you later. Okay. So let's go to um, record and playback. Escape, trace, record playback. Let's start a new session using the internal device. And let's set the frequency mass trigger and edit mass. Okay, what I'll normally do is just we, um, to clear off everything on the preset and I'll just do one thing called build from trace. Okay, and let's turn this on and you will see that it's right on the trace that we're seeing. And if you want um, to have some margin and you can actually go to escape, amplitude. We lower down that um, uh, attenuations, so you see that there's some gap here. But um, again, this this kind of hard to hit that. Just for this purpose, this might work for you for, for a situation. Um, but for this purpose, um, I will just do a flat line. So let's set a flat line roughly about minus uh, eighty, so that this signal when it hit over it, it will start capturing. Let's go back there. Um, let's go to trace, record payback, record payback setup, frequency mass trigger. <coughs> Excuse me. I did. Let's clear off everything again. And we add another point, add one more limit. Um, so start at one gig and stop at two gig. Amplitude minus 80 dBm. Uh, will it hit? Oh man. <clears throat> yeah, we can play around with it later. Um, and I'll make sure that there's a signal hit above that line. So we set this two point from 1 gig to 2 gig at minus 80. Let's turn that on. Um, click on and edit. Okay. So um, we try to set up a situation where if any signal hit above this line, um, it will start recording. And we're done with that. Oh, now, of course, you can actually save that mask for future use. Um, and we go to recording configurations. So first of all, we need to make sure that uh, it trigger with the mass, uh, frequency mass trigger. So let's see um, what will happen if we don't set that. Um, then we just go to back and start recording so the moment you start rec click this it will start recording as you can see that the state sorry the session um, number is increasing so in regardless of whether your signal is above that line or not it's still recording so how do we set that the, the condition where if we start recording when the signal is above that line is to set this frequency mass trigger and back and of course, uh, just for this uh, this session, um, I'll just continue on with uh, what we have here. Um, 
then we just do the recording so this uh, this could be caused by this and let's say we change that frequency mask trigger again let's go back to setup frequency mask trigger edit mask um, instead of minus 80 we set it to minus 75 um, let's say minus 75 so only when this signal or this signal go above um, minus 75, it will start recording. In theory, um, let's go back here. No, we go back to frequency mask trigger. No, sorry, recording config. Okay, mask on and go to record. So as you can see, this, the session is not, added, um, it's not increasing. Um, and it started because there was a signal up here and when you don't set a limit um, a condition there you continue to uh, record so what do we need to do is like we can go to segment count so segment count is uh, defined as um, how many how many iterations you, you want to record after the mask being triggered so let's say we set it to two and let's go back here and currently um, it's 64 um, then we just wait for the signal to up yep so as you can see every time a signal go above the the line it will just record two session I mean, sorry two uh, traces per incident and let's just wait for another one so currently it's 68 come on So as you can see, it hits here, and two session, two traces was recorded. Okay, and one more thing about this uh, recording, I've noticed that um, we set a record interval. Let's say we set it to five second, and frequency mask on. Um, so the condition is where um, we want to measure if uh, there's a signal up and segment count two and we want to have a gap of uh, five seconds in between let's see whether it works so let's do a recording 70 right now okay 71 10 seconds 72 73 74, 75, okay, and let's say we have a signal that is um, constantly there more than 10 seconds. So I can actually turn on my source. <coughs> let's say we set it to 1.5 gig. And just a CW, it's just one signal out. Let's turn it on and Okay, capture that. Okay, next one, two. Maybe wait for 10 seconds, maybe five seconds, and then capture another five, another two more. Okay. Um, five seconds, anything more? No, all right. So let's try again. So if I turn it on, two, uh, two traces, and wait for 10 seconds, eh, 5 seconds, 1, 2, yep. Mm. Okay, so, yep. I think I've got the data. So what we need to do here is, um, oh, sorry, let's stop this. So there are multiple conditions that you can set over here. And uh, this way you you tell um, the field box to measure a signal when the frequency mask is triggered and every time it triggered measure two counts two traces and between traces let's have a gap of five seconds assuming that the signal is no more there so this is how it works and please uh, remember to save or close the session 
because currently the session is recorded in temporary memory and by any chance that you shut down this field box it just disappear again just close session and you can recall the session uh, when you need it uh, for post-processing so right now it's as you can see this is what we have this is what I've done just now before this video and this session 13 is one that we have um, done the, in this video so let's open it and let's uh, Okay, open it. No. So we recall session again. And let's play. Okay. So this way you can play back. And if you have a GPS uh, set up correctly by now, um, when you play back, you see the longitude and latitude at this bottom of the screen. Okay. And of course, when you play back, you can pause it and we can define which trace we want it to look at. And then we can actually snapshot um, either the CSV file or the screenshot and uh, put in our report. So um, question about how to set up uh, GPS uh, um, locations, uh, tracking. So we just go to the escape system. Uh, system configurations, GPS. So <clears throat> connect the GPS antenna to the top of the field box and then um, turn it on here, internal. And this is where you can see display on or off. Okay. So even if the display is off, um, the locations, the GPS locations will be recorded. As long as you put it as an internal and you can choose to off it uh, for whatever reason you have um, so this is what i have and uh, because this gps is not um it's not using the assisted gps like our phone is so if you have a cold start um, on the on the gps it probably take about four minutes for you to download the ephemeris uh, and almanac farm uh, and then with that, um, you have your locations right after that. So that's it uh, for this for today. Um, the record playback in spec and mode uh, in Fieldbox. Thanks for watching.